In this video, I will show you PPT Merge, Mail Merge for PowerPoint. This video was inspired by Steve in the post shown here. Let's take a look. First, we'll need a data source. Below is a sample of three optional layouts. One, of course, is going to show our slide mode, the typical fields we might have. We also have one for presentation mode with a very special at file name. This is used so that when each new presentation is built, it will have a unique name. Third is presentation mode transposed, so if you have a lot of details, it's often easier to enter the data and work with the data in the transposed mode. We'll simply click on the swap checkbox when we perform the merge. We will also need a template with our fields on it. These are noted with a colon, name, colon. This is used to help separate. So if I needed a label called client or a label called date, I could simply put those in. And any place we see the colon, name, colon, that matches up with our data source. Once the merge is complete, we will have an individual file for each record. Of course, this is in our presentation mode. When we do slides mode, which we'll do a step-by-step -step of in just a moment, we'll see that that's quite frankly the only difference is the output. The detailed steps along the way are identical. Let's explore one of the individual files. You'll note that instead of the colon name colon fields, we now have the data that was in the source. And each slide, of course, has been generated and all the data is appropriately in the correct places. Now let's take a look step by step at how we use a slides mode to show one record on each slide. And of course, then for each record we have, a new slide will be generated. First, we start off with our template. Now it's very important if I want to use slides mode that I have a single slide within the presentation. If I have more than one slide within the template, then I cannot use slides mode. Presentation would be the only choice that I would have. Also, I need to make sure that my fields are in the proper location. I have an area here where an image will be placed if there is an image available. If there is not an image available, this field will disappear in the end result. Also within this text area, I have colon client colon on colon date colon. This allows me to have my field and client date met with and results will all be replaced with the value that happens to exist for that record inside of that Excel spreadsheet. Let's see it in action. I'm going to go to my add-ins. Now that we have the template appropriately created, we then go to PP Tools and we go down to Merge. And in the Merge dialog box, I do have, again, the choice for slides and presentation. Presentation would create a new presentation for each data record. We're interested in the same presentation, but a new slide for every data record. I'm going to go out and browse. It does the courtesy of reminding me that the last time I performed this particular merge, I had used a file that was on my desktop in a folder, and it's saying, would you like to use that file again? I'm going to say yes. This is a huge time saver if we're using the same source for different reasons. And speaking of those different reasons, each particular set of data may be on its own worksheet tab. Here I have slides mode, presentation mode, and presentation mode transposed, which simply swapped and flipped the data. Therefore, the labels are in the row and the column 
holds the record. This is great if I have very complex data. It's much easier sometimes to, to view the data. Personal preference there. I'll do slides mode and I will load the data. And loading the data and it checks the source to make sure it's appropriate. Having the load data separate is helpful if we have thousands of records, let's say, because we may want to load the data when we're ready. Therefore, it is a big time saver and it doesn't preload the data before we're prepared for it. We can also then show the data. And speaking of those large data sources, if I want to test it out with just a couple of records, we simply say merge only and pick record such to such, you know, one to 10 instead of all the thousands. I want all of my records. And then I want to place it in a very specific location. I will browse. And if you already have performed this merge with this presentation in the past, you have an option to replace it. Or we can go ahead and create a brand new one. And if we create a brand new one, we simply type and enter a new name. I'll go ahead and save over the one that I already had. And then it's just a matter of clicking Merge waiting a few moments. Of course, the more records we have, the longer it may take, but be patient. It will be well worth it. I'm going to go ahead and click Merge. And before we know it, of course, we only had three records, but before I know it, it's done. And I simply click OK. And now we have a slide for every record. Here is our first record, PP Tools, uh, Steve, and new software design finalized. Second record was Webucator, June 15th, met with Tracy Berry, etc. So each record has its own slide. What happens if some of the information is not available? For example, uh, we only had the images loaded for record one and record two, and you see the images in the upper right corner. We, however, did not have an image loaded for three. There was an image referenced, but the image was not available. So that field in the upper right corner, that gray box that was there earlier in the template, removed itself from slide three so that there were no eh, leftover pieces, there was, was no mess. All right? So clean execution is one of the key factors of this wonderful process. I wanted to note that if you are running the demo version of this add-in, it's going to add a few extra characters and a watermark. Now, of course, it's fully functional. It does absolutely everything else the official registered copy will do. It just adds these extra elements, and I'll show you what those look like. Here's a sample of the extra characters and the demo watermark. However, it's very easy to remove this by simply going up to Help and then choosing to Register. Once you fill in the appropriate information, the name and the registration code that was sent to you, you then see a confirmation to show that everything was registered appropriately. Thanks again, Steve, for inspiring this video. Do please check out Steve's other wonderful add-ins at the link shown below. Now keep in mind, if you don't see a feature that you need or you're interested in or have any other questions, please do reach out and contact Steve. He is always glad to hear from his users and help out in any way that he can.